Brian, you've been with the Global Donor Platform since its very beginnings in 2003. We would like to take the opportunity of your retirement now to talk to you about some of the achievements of the platform and also get some of your recommendations for the future. What would you say were the key achievements in terms of networking activity? Some of the joint work that the platform has done, for example, the World, the World Bank FAO study on statistics, which the platform uh, published, I think about 2008, uh, nine. Uh, a lot of hard work by both FAO and the World Bank into a, a very uh, important analysis of rural development statistics, uh, what they uh, signified and how they could be better improved. The initiation of the CADAP group stands out, uh, which has now basically become self-functioning, self run by the donors themselves. And then I see also the work that the platform did in beginning to address the issues of climate leading up to the, the Copenhagen COP, uh, COP meeting. And more recently, you're seeing the work that's being done in the land working group. Beyond the networking events, which other instruments did you experience as being very effective? I think the platform's communicated well with its membership and to the outside of membership, principally through its website. That's the principal tool I think people have found important and requires emphasis again in the future. I think what we also find is the, the updates, the one two-page monthly updates of what the platform's been doing. The importance of that was you get a simple A4 page of updates with links or comments elsewhere, focused on events that are important in the agriculture and rural development sector. That's, uh, that was an ideal and remains an ideal uh, tool. And I think uh, increasingly use of Twitter. So for example, what would be useful as we look at the, the uh, output from the Addis Ababa Finance for Development meeting would be a small note from the platform released on Twitter that says what agricultural perspectives have been highlighted by the Addis meeting. Is there a need for the platform to change its modus operandi to be able to respond more quickly? Either platform members and or the secretariat need to have a, a strategy that says, okay, when we know there's going to be key events uh, that are, we believe, of relevance to our membership, and those key events will be events that we've discussed already at the, the AGA or in other fora where we've highlighted upcoming events, that the platform and or its members are ready to be putting out short messages on Twitter or on updates on, on the platform website. Why is it important for a platform of this nature to be more than just an exchanger of knowledge? The platform has always said it wanted to do and saw the, the role and necessity of both knowledge exchange and advocacy. Um, the two are not you know, linked. One doesn't go up and the other one uh, goes down. Uh, knowledge exchange uh, is important and, and knowledge networking is important. And we can, we can, we can talk more about that. And I think central to that issue is the desire at any one time of members who want to share knowledge on a particular topic. And I think it's if the platform is going to add value to the networking of knowledge, it needs to spend some time and go into some detail on particular topics and not simply skim over or recycle uh, at a low key level some of the existing knowledge. You're going to see as we move into the the climate uh, uh, meetings in, in Paris at the end of the year. Uh, again, a strong need for someone to be advocating that agriculture may be part of the problem, but it is also very much part of the solution to climate uh, adaptation and, 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 and climate mitigation. But if the platform is able to produce in the lead up to the Paris meeting, small pieces that advocate for outputs uh, that advocate for the role of agriculture <clears throat> in, in, 
in in uh, supporting the climate agenda, that would be uh, that would be very welcome. Why is it important also to have a look at the enabling environment and not just stick to the more narrow field of agricultural and rural development? I think people have realized that the narrow field was never a narrow field and it was a wide open plain, if you like. When you talk about promoting agriculture, if you take it to its, its conclusions, you promote agriculture, you promote cultivation and production. Ergo, you are also... Uh, Uh, promoting marketing, which means consumers, and it very take very quickly takes you into the the urban environment. So effectively, what you'd be doing in in a, in a in a given Asian or African or Latin American country is saying a country has the ability uh, to produce, market and sell its own agricultural production and reduce its dependency on. On, uh, on agricultural and food processed imports. And, and that goes beyond aid effectiveness. I think we're, we're, we're clearly now talking more about development effectiveness. Uh, that Development effectiveness is, is a partnership <clears throat> at, led by the country at country level, including donors, but also including civil society and the private sector in a much more collegial, uh, respectful partnership than any one donor uh, seeking to be effective in a particular area. And I think that also has parallels in the way that the platform begins to operate now. Where would you say should the platform put its future focus? And maybe also how should it position itself within this evolving landscape? The members need to sit down and address that issue themselves recognizing what their own institutions will do and how collectively they may wish to work together in the platform to facilitate what they do as institutions and how they can extend that to a, 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 wider, a wider audience. Does the platform maybe need a strong lead theme every year in order not to dissipate, not to dilute its resources? The platform is, is, is well situated to build on its existing partnership of, of donors, to continue its outreach to the private sector, to civil society and other foundations, and to start to consider how it will absorb the messages that are coming from the Finance for Development meeting, from the SDGs in New York in September, and from the climate work, and say, you know, what are the two or three key areas only that the platform wants to work, work in over the next three years? What's the platform going to be recognized as? Why will people go to the platform website? Not for generic discussion about topic X, Y, or Z, perhaps, but perhaps they'll be going because they've recognized that over the last six months or a year, the platform has consistently reported on climate issues and the role of the private sector. So the platform is going to have to look to really where it brings its comparative advantage and its value added and potentially focus on two or three topics, hot topics. So that would go beyond declaring something important. Once you declare something important as a focal point, you would have to commit yourself uh, to work with a platform on it. You know, I mean, it's, yeah, absolutely. We need to move beyond if you like, the last day of the Aga, where we all say what we want to do into the, the, the real day after, which is saying how we're going to do it. And how we're going to do it is not necessarily saying, Secretariat, can you do it for us? It's saying we will individually commit to doing it. It's not a, a big leap forward to say, right, now how can you in, enhance that commitment and how can other members help you enhance that commitment and join you in that commitment. It's just, it's just being flexible to respond to events. Uh, and I think events are moving faster uh, sometimes than the platform is ready to, to respond to. And so I'm just thinking how we can adjust uh, the way that uh, we, we operate. Economies are evolving. I said I was in recently in Sri Lanka. The government is looking clearly at the type of agricultural knowledge and resources it wishes donors to engage with, 
that need some specialized uh, support and services, again, how can the platform membership exchange and facilitate knowledge uh, on that? We've done it in the past. We did some country studies and we looked at issues of where the platform could share its knowledge in particular uh, country, country context. Again, that happens, that needs very much individual members to take, to take the lead of, of wanting to do that. Your message to the focal points? I'm saying they have to make choices. And the choices are, from, in my opinion, to move away from a multifaceted spectrum of activities into a focused and targeted set of objectives which will give the, the platform, its membership, a credibility, a reputation as the go-to platform for knowledge and advocacy on that particular topic. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you very much, Pascal.